All right, in this section, we're going to find surface areas of revolution. So this is a lot like finding arc length, except we're going to take the arc length and rotate it around an axis. So let's consider a continuous function. And what we want to do is take this bit of the curve here and rotate that guy around, say, the x-axis. And of course, we're used to doing this with volumes, but we're going to do this now. And instead of seeking the volume, what we're seeking now is the surface area. Okay, so how exactly are we going to do that? Well, what we're doing is we're going to take one little piece of our function and we'll have, say, a width dx. And we're going to rotate that piece around. And what we get is sort of like a barnacle or some, some sort of shape like this. And we're going to just find the surface area of one of these strips and then we'll add them up using an integral. So we just want this surface area here. All right, so of course we want this length. This length here is as before, this length is dx squared plus dy squared because it's kind of the hypotenuse of a tiny little triangle consisting of a horizontal length dx and a vertical length dy. Now, we are going to need this r here, which we'll call the radius. So we can see that the surface area of this particular round strip is going to be the circumference multiplied by that length which is dx squared plus dy squared under a radical. So in other words, the surface area here is going to be 2 times pi times that radius. That's the circumference all the way around. And then multiplied by this width, dx squared plus dy squared. And that's it. We're just going to integrate that thing from a to b, and we're done. So our formula for surface area is s is equal to the integral from, say, a to b of 2 pi times a radius and 1 plus the derivative squared dx. And we get that again, as we did before up here, by factoring dx out of the radical. and then commuting it over to the far right side of the integral. Okay, so now for the exercises that we're going to see, we're only ever going to be rotating around the x or the y axis. So our radius, capital R, is always just going to be with respect to the x or the y axis, which means itself is going to just be x or y. So I want to write down a more general surface area formula with that in mind. So as before, let's let f be a differentiable function whose derivative is continuous on the interval from a to b. Then our surface area is going to be the integral from a to b of 2 times pi times and let's leave this blank. This is kind of our r. And we'll come back to that. Multiplied by 1 plus dy over dx squared dx. OK. Or s is equal to the integral from c to d if we choose to integrate with respect to y. And again, I'm going to leave this guy off. And this is integrating with respect to y. 
with x being a function of y. Okay, so what about this purple dashed squares that I've made here, these placeholders for our capital R? What goes here is either x or y, and that depends entirely on the axis of rotation. So you'll put an x there if the axis of rotation is the y-axis. Or you'll put a y there if the axis of rotation is the x-axis. However, you might not be done the setup. For instance, let's say you're integrating with respect to y, and you're going around the y-axis, which means we would put an x right here. Well, we wouldn't be done our setup because x needs to be written in terms of y. So what you would do instead is at the last second, replace that with the actual function, say g of y. However, if we were integrating with respect to y and we were going around the x-axis, then we would put a y right here. Then we would leave it alone because we're integrating with respect to y, which means we already want everything to be in terms of y, and this is in terms of y. Uh, well, let's see some examples. Okay, so here we have a surface area problem. We're going to rotate this curve about the x-axis. Uh, it's not strictly required to graph these, but let's see what it looks like. So y equals rad 5 minus x. That's a parabola like this. So 3 to 5 would be this little region right here. And we're going around, whoops, and we're going around the x-axis. So that creates a little kind of paraboloid here, and we want to know the surface area of that paraboloid. Okay, well, it seems like the best thing to do would be to integrate with respect to x. So we'll set this up as our surface area will be some kind of integral. 2 pi times, that's either going to be x or y. And we are integrating with respect to x. So is this dy dx or dx dy? Well, let me just give you a hint. This even applies for arc length. Whatever you have out here, dx in this case, needs to be the denominator. So this is dy over dx. So what goes here, x or y? Well, whatever opposite letter of the axis of rotation we're going around. So since we're going around the x-axis, we will put a y right here. OK, well, we're not quite done our setup, though. Uh, first of all, we need bounds. Those are 3 to 5 x values. Uh, but we're still not done our setup because we need that y to be written in terms of x. Okay, so we consult the original curve and we can see, ah, this is going to be integral from 3 to 5, 2 pi times y, which is 5 minus x, times 1 plus dy dx squared dx. Okay, now we still need to find the actual derivative dy dx and put that in there, but I want to emphasize that if we were going around the y-axis, and instead we had an x here as a result, we wouldn't need to do anything to it because we're integrating with respect to dx, so we would just leave that as an x right there. Okay, so we, of course we need dy dx. So dy dx is the derivative of the square root of 5 minus x, so that would be 1 over 2 times the square root of 5 minus x, Ah, but then chain rule, so one more negative comes out. So there's our derivative, which means that our integral is the integral from 3 to 5 of 2 pi times 5 minus x, 1 plus this thing squared dx. And if this were a setup only problem, that is where we would stop. 
it actually said to find the area, so let's finish this problem. All right. Well, now let's see. We've got our work cut out for us algebraically in here. We're going to have 1 plus, if we square this, we'll have 1 over 4, 5 minus x. OK. Let's get everything within that radical into a common denominator. So this will be 4 times 5 minus x plus 1, and that's all over 4 times 5 minus x. And that's all within the radical with a dx here on the right. OK, so let's distribute that radical into the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, we have 4 times 5 minus x. In fact, let's even simplify that. So that's 20 plus 1, which is 21 minus 4x. And in the denominator, we have the square root of 4 times 5 minus x. Well, let's write that as 2 times rad 5 minus x. And then we have our dx. And look, wonderful things are happening. All right, so why don't we do a u substitution? We'll let u be 21 minus 4x. So du is negative 4 dx. So we have pi times the square root of u. And our dx is du over negative 4. And we also have new bounds of integration because when x is equal to 3, u is 21 minus 12, which is 9. And when x is equal to 5, we have u is 21 minus 20, which is 1. All right, this is starting to look manageable. So we can factor the negative 1 fourth out. However, I'm going to use the move where you can apply a negative to an integral and change the order of its bounds. So, oh, let's factor the pi out as well. So now we have u to the 1 half du, and we're ready to integrate this. So this is going to be pi over 4 times 2 thirds u to the 3 halves. So 9 to the 3 halves, which is 27. And 1 to the anything is 1. So 26 times 2 over 3 is 52 over 3. Ah, but 4 goes into 52 13 times. Any poker player knows that. So we have 13 pi over 3. And final answer. OK, so we have a surface area problem. Oh, well, let's set it up. But let's be very careful to go through the right order of thinking here. OK, so our s is going to be the integral of something, right? With me so far? Affirmative. Now, first decision we should make, should we integrate with respect to x or with respect to y? Uh, given that our bounds are y values, we should integrate with respect to y. So this will be 1 to 2, and then we'll put a dy over there. So what is that force? That forces this part to be 1 plus dx over dy squared. Right? Again, this guy here has to match the denominator of this guy here. So now we're going to go 2 times pi. And the last thing we need is either an x or a y to go here. And that's simply going to be the letter that's the opposite from the axis of rotation. So if we're going around the x-axis, this is going to be a y. Simple as that. Now, the next thing is, do we need to replace that y with something in terms of x? 
in the last example, we did have to replace that y with something. This time, we don't, because we're integrating with respect to y. So that guy's good. We're going to leave him alone. All we need is the derivative of x with respect to y. So derivative of x with respect to y is 4y. So therefore, our integral is the integral from 1 to 2 of 2 pi times y radical 1 plus 4y quantity squared dy. Okay, I can't tell you the number of times we've gotten to this point in a lecture in a face-to-face -face class and I've asked the students, what do you guys think we should do next? And the most common response is we should do a tangent substitution. Now let me stress that's going to work. Yes, it would indeed work. We have the form for that, one plus a thing squared, perfect for tangent substitution, but don't forget there's something even better. Before you even knew about trig substitutions, everyone would have been able to handle this one without a second thought because this is a classic u substitution situation. We have an inside function whose derivative is linear in y and we have a y on the outside, so this is perfect. So we are gonna just do a regular old-fashioned u substitution here. So u is one plus 16y squared, our du is 32y dy. So this means that y dy is du over 32. Okay, so our integral is now two pi times y dy, so that's du over 32, and we have just the square root of u. Our new bounds are when y is equal to one, u is equal to one plus 16, so that's 17. And when y is equal to two, u is equal to one plus four times 16, so that would be 65. So we can factor pi over 16, 17 to 65 of u to the three, of uh, whoops, of u to the one half, du. So integrating, we get this with uh, bounds of 17 to 65, and let's plug them right in. So we can actually factor the two thirds out, giving us pi over 24. And then we plug 65 in, we'll get 65 to the 3 halves minus 17 to the 3 halves. So let's just call that our final answer.